The final section is heat transfer mechanisms. The book introduces a couple of equations, but I don't think any of those are important, since really those are things that you would learn about if you followed uh, physics to higher level classes. So the first heat transfer mechanism, and the one that we're going to talk about most in this class, is conduction. This is when you have direct contact. So the book uses an example of a soldering iron, but I don't know how many of you have actually ever used a soldering iron in real life. So it's a great example, but not one that's necessarily relevant to you. Something that you've possibly used is an electric stove. You might call this an electric range or an electric burner or simply a hot plate, but you know that it's a hot surface that is made out of, say, metal. Well, okay, the old-fashioned ones are made out of metal. And it gets really hot. In fact, mine at home gets red hot. I put a pot of water on it, eventually it boils, and I get mac and cheese. So that's conduction. That the red hot element, electric element, touches the pot, which is filled with water, and is just literally transferring heat by touch. Now, the ability to conduct heat is material dependent. We think of metal as good conductors, which is why you wouldn't want to directly touch that metal hot pot of mac and cheese. But cloth which is filled with air right like a big uh, oven mitt actually is not a good conductor of heat or the plastic handle of my pot is not a good conductor of heat so it's material dependent and that's something where again there's material properties that you can look up in tables a second mechanism is convection, which actually depends on turbulent flow of media. We're definitely not talking about that in this class, or really any class ever. This has to do with the motion of a fluid. And we can think this, I think the example that we can think about most often is say hot air rising, which you can see with smoke. But this picture is rather lovely in that it's actually ink, which is slightly warmer than the water it's in. And you can see it coming out and then moving around. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is that this actually um, is relevant for certain ocean currents that largely are temperature dependent and based on convection. There's also convective currents in the air. So from a climate change point of view, from a meteorology point of view, convection is really important. But from a physics point of view, it's really hard because thinking about fluids doing this is basically impossible. So know that it exists um, and that it's really relevant for many things, but calculating the details of it from a physics perspective is not something we're going to do. Next is radiation. Now, this is a place where the book introduces some equations, and those equations are really interesting, and it's something that if you continue to take physics, and for instance, take modern physics, you'll learn more about. And there'll even be a little bit about it in the second semester of physics, because radiation is when we're talking about energy transferred by electromagnetic rays or electromagnetic radiation. And this might sound scary if you're not familiar with it, but this is basically light at different wavelengths or different frequencies beyond what or different from what we can see with our eyes. And the second semester of physics does deal with electromagnetic radiation, at least a little bit. So some examples that make sense are the sun. You know that if you're standing under the sun, your skin gets warm or anything gets warm. Maybe the car steering wheel gets really hot. And that's due to the radiation heat transferring heat. Uh, another example would be like red hot coals. You know that certain things glow different colors based on their temperature and that uh, so you could use temperature to predict color or color to predict temperature. This spectrum is actually described by a theory called black body radiation and this is actually an early part of quantum theory. So again, if you take modern physics, you'll learn a lot more about this, actually do some labs and calculations. So we're not going to worry about doing the quantitative part of that right now. Lastly is evaporation. And the book claimed that it described this in an earlier section, but I don't think it did. Now, Evaporation is a little tricky to think about because we need some advanced statistical mechanics, so some advanced statistical physics to really think about this. But basically some molecules are becoming gas from the liquid. But you might think about the fact that boiling is supposed to occur at a specific temperature. 
But you know from just your daily experience that if you leave a cup of water out for a long time, it eventually vanishes through evaporation. And it isn't that it suddenly boiled when you didn't look. And so when we talk about boiling, we're really talking about the bulk of the water. But the very top layer of the liquid, and here I'm using this slightly creepy picture of this woman staring at you very intently, um, that this very top layer of the liquid can actually escape into the air even if it isn't at the temperature of boiling. And again, we need some advanced physics tools to really understand that. But a simple way of thinking about that is that actually each of these molecules would have a slightly different temperature. That when we think about the temperature of the entire liquid, we're kind of doing an average. And so some of these molecules at the very top of the surface actually would have a really high temperature. And what we'll learn about in the next chapter is that this has to do with speed. So all of these molecules are bouncing around at different speeds, some faster than others, and suddenly some bounce away and escape. And what that actually means is that it's cooling down the liquid because it's carrying away some energy with it. And the hottest ones are the ones to leave, and so that means that the average energy is actually decreasing with time. So that's a much more detailed explanation than the book gives you, but more of this will be described in the next section when we think about what's happening microscopically. Again, there's not any calculations to do here, but all of these processes are helpful in understanding different heat transfer processes when really the only ones we're calculating right now are all about conduction.